Hi friends, I'm Dr. Zachary Ginder with Pine Siskin Consulting in the series where I answer workplace wellness, psychology, leadership, and organizational development questions, all from an evidence-informed lens. For each episode, I'll select one question to explore in more detail. Again, as a reminder, if you have a question in search of an answer, you can submit it in the comment section below or on the Pine Siskin Consulting contact form. Uh, the address is also listed in the show notes. So this week's question comes from an individual in Riverside who writes, Dr. Ginder, I have managed to alienate myself with a coworker who just experienced a significant loss in her life. In a moment of awkward silence, I started asking questions. She got upset and left the room. Things have gotten better since that interaction happened, but any ideas on what I can do in the future or even in the present situation? Oh, uh, that's a big one. Uh, so there are a variable mountain of literature and writing on loss, grief, and bereavement, uh, as it is really a core component of our human condition. So I want to acknowledge up front that there are folks that have dedicated their entire lives to the study of grief and loss within the clinical and research space um, that have an expert expertise far beyond mine. Uh, but workplace dynamics are my thing and my, my area of expertise. So here's my assessment. Um, from that perspective. Uh, loss can take many forms. Uh, we often think of loss more globally as in death. However, grief resulting from loss can really stem from any number of things, including changes in employment, uh, changes in relationships, uh, income, housing, uh, changes in status, uh, health, uh, physical or mental ability, the loss of an opportunity even. Uh, and countless others, including the ultimate physical loss of a loved one, whether it be human or animal. Within our lives, I wager that most of us will experience some sort of loss uh, and the resulting grief. And because we spend a majority of our lives at work or in the workplace, um, this will inevitably spill over into that area. Uh, oftentimes we have the best intentions, but they seem to fall flat when we're working with people who are grieving. Um, it is in our human nature to want to try and help fix um, things <laughs> or, or people. Uh, when, and when we see someone struggling, we want to jump in, but without the right tools, uh, we can you know, perhaps do more harm than good. So I want to highlight a couple articles that I think are relevant to this discussion. So from a subjective experience, Sabina Nawaz in 2017 wrote an article for the Harvard Business Review about her, her personal experience with significant family loss. Um, one of the recommendations I feel is most useful from her article um, that I'd like to highlight is that everyone grieves differently. So she also mentioned that expecting grief to follow a timeline, have a completion point, uh, or be comparable to your own previous experience with loss are often misguided. Uh, I would also add, uh, from my perspective to Spina's list, that bright side conversations where a colleague offers an unsolicited look at, look at the bright side um, framework is often not well received. Similarly, questions about the strength of the relationship uh, or attachment to the subject of loss, how long they knew the subject of loss, uh, if they were close, uh, if it was genuine love and so on, uh, can come off as really questioning the person's reasoning for feeling the way that they do and can inadvertently uh, invalidate their lived experience. And I'm confident that this is not the message that we ultimately want to convey. So research tells us that social support is an absolutely vital part of effectively working through grief and loss. But the messiness of loss means that social support is often kind of a mixed bag of things that help and can often hinder uh, healing and uh, resolution of grief. We do know that when there's a lack of social support though, that or when, even when support is incongruent with the need of the person, uh, that can lead to further isolation, self-harm, uh, psychological and physiological distress. So. Uh, interestingly, a study from 2021 noted that coworkers rated, were rated fairly low uh, in their level of perceived quality support provided to others. So the good news is, is that there is a lot of room for growth uh, in this area. Uh, in the same study, they also outlined uh, 
supportive actions that can be taken when someone is experiencing grief that were viewed as helpful. Uh, emotional support when, within the workplace can often mean simply being present or holding the space for the person to grieve, allowing for open expressions of grief in your presence, uh, while again holding a place for the expression of that grief. Uh, listening, giving time, uh, being available, not trying to fit grief into your scheduled timeline or expectation for resolution of profound grief, um, refraining from giving advice, and also offering timeless support as opposed, as opposed to time-limited support. All these things have been uh, noted as uh, very helpful for those who are grieving in the workplace. So. Uh, if you're familiar with the subject of loss, some other things that may be helpful is to offering fond memories, saying the name of the individual if it was an individual that's passed, um, remembering to acknowledge milestones uh, or events that may be difficult for that bereaved person, uh, and also being sensitive in the communication, um, in your level of communication with that person. So on an individual level, if you have the ability and the familiarity with the coworker to offer more, such as dropping off a meal, uh, watching kids for an evening, writing a personal note. Uh, these can also all be helpful. Um, alternately, phrases like, please let me know if you need anything, were not viewed as, as helpful uh, in the research uh, because it put the onus on the grieving individual to take the action first. So lastly, I wanna clarify that we cannot be everything to everyone. And it's important to know your boundaries um, and what you're comfortable doing or saying. Uh, if you're not sure what to do, just being present, quiet, and understanding can oftentimes make a difference and be meaningful for the grieving individual. As a reminder, if you like this content uh, and you'd like to see more, uh, I encourage you to click the thumbs up to subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and click the bell icon if you're on YouTube for future notifications of episodes. So until next time, my name is Dr. Zachary Ginder for Pine Siskin Consulting, wishing you professional wellness, success, and joy in your life.